What if, by some incredible coincidence, like you hearing this talk, you found your key to performance? I mean, like high performance, like next level performance. What would you do with it? Would you go for it? Or would you flinch and doubt? See, I was a flincher and a doubter. Probably why I've been studying high performance for the last 30 years. <laughs> I was an athlete for a long, long time. Long, long time. <laughs> I started swimming when I was five and a half, and I ended my career as an All-American at UCLA. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and while I had my share of successes, I had even more failures. I know, you may think I'm being hard on myself with this, but if you take this ride with me, you'll see that all those years I spent beating myself up for not being good enough, thinking I had a performance problem. At the source, it was a personal energy problem. I can't even imagine what it would have been like if I had spent my energy racing instead of doubting. See, our energy is one of the most critical elements to our performance. Whether we're stepping up onto the blocks at Olympic trials, walking into a boardwood to present our ideas, asking someone we have a crush on for a date, yeah, that takes energy. So does having a conversation with your kids. And we get it wrong all the time. We think energy is something to spend. How far can I run? How long can I work? How long can I put off that vacation <laughs> before I collapse? The thing about personal energy is that, yeah, you got to spend it to get what you want, but did you know that you also need to replenish it to get what you want? Because we've been thinking about energy incorrectly, one of our big barriers to performance is, believe it or not, resilience. We are using resilience wrong. I know. All you've heard is if you're tired or struggling or not feeling right, it's because you're not resilient enough. But this whole look how much I can take and still bounce back thing, how's that working? Resilience originally was a study in psychology. It looked at survivors of childhood trauma. It identified the set of adaptive behaviors to extremely high stress. Not 1,000 emails in your inbox kind of stress, but traumatic stress. Okay, not that 1,000 emails aren't stressful, but this is exactly my point. You shouldn't need a set of resiliencies to open your computer each day. It's for the big ones, for bouncing back from the emergencies or the tragedies. Obviously, resilience is important, but it is not a muscle we're meant to flex every day. Okay, so now that I've pissed off all the resilience trainers out there, <laughs> I used to be one. And while it is a critical skill, we have been lured into teaching it as an absolute solution when it is not. Okay, man walks into a sports psychologist's office and says, hey doc, I pass out at the end of my 10K races I do for fun. Okay, it's not a joke, it's a true story. <laughs> And you wouldn't believe how many people have come to me with this exact same passing out problem. Okay, three, but still. <laughs> the, the problem that he had was that the time he spent every morning taking care of himself with his running, at some point, it stopped being enough to offset the remaining 15 hours of stress in his day. Long story short, I told him he needed to replenish energy throughout the day. As he was trying to convince me he didn't have time for that, he revealed that he had this 10-minute walk from his office to the hospital, and he made that trip a few times every day. Perfect, I said. Get a pair of those over-the-ear headphones so that people can see you're listening to something, and I want you to listen to something restorative. Music that makes you feel good, comedy to laugh, a podcast to learn something. No work, just walk and restore. Before he could say no, because I heard it coming, I said, I'm so sure this will work, I'll bet you our next three sessions. He agreed. 
A month later, he came in, he sat down and he said, I think I ought to pay you double for those sessions. I can't believe how 10 minutes here and 10 minutes there actually worked. He said he was feeling better, he was thinking better, he was looking forward to that walk now. And he said the thing that totally surprised him was that when he got home at night, he wasn't as exhausted anymore. I became a sports psychologist because I couldn't fix my performance problem as an athlete. <laughs> and I thought, if I learn everything that I can about psychology, okay, yes, I'm a shrink. Although I like to go myself a stretch. <laughs> Thank you for getting that. <laughs> Maybe I could help others suffer less than I did. <laughs> I worked with athletes for about a decade, and while I was helpful, there was still something missing. Naturally, I turned to corporate training for the answer. <laughs> okay, it was for the money, <laughs> but I worked for a great company. I taught energy management and resilience, I told you, <laughs> and I learned a ton. Eventually, I went out on my own, and one of my first solo gigs was, you guessed it, a resilience training. I remember walking into this room of like mid-level managers and feeling like it wasn't exactly the friendliest environment. <laughs> so in my haste to win them over, I decided to start the day by asking them how they defined resilience. Crickets. <laughs> like nothing. <laughs> Finally, some generous soul in the front of the room said, Resilience, that's how my company squeezes even more work out of me when I'm already exhausted. Yeah, I stood there knowing I only had a few seconds to decide. Was I gonna stick to my slides, which was going to teach them to be more resilient so their company could squeeze more work out of them? Or was I gonna try and find a way to help? So in a leap of something, I walked over, I shut my computer off, I grabbed a marker, I went up to the whiteboard, and I drew this picture of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I know I had you until Maslow, but stay <laughs> with me. Because I drew this up on the board to explain this model which you may recognize, not as needs, but from the framework of energy. So these bottom two levels, Right, the bottom two levels, those are called our basic needs for safety and survival. The subtext here is you can't move above those levels until these needs are met. Because we are wired for survival, it takes priority. As in, it takes your energy to prioritize survival. Best invention ever until you can't tell the difference in threat between a saber-toothed tiger in the tree and an email with all caps in the subject line. <laughs> as soon as the brain even senses a threat, all our energy goes down here to keep us alive. Handy, staying alive, right? <laughs> but it's exhausting, and the energy down here is expensive. So if we replace the word needs with emotions, the picture becomes even more clear. What we feel down here are the emotions of survival. Fear, frustration, tension, anxiety, doubt, depression, grief. This is not the place to perform from. As we resolve these needs, and more on that in a minute, up we go above what I like to call the yummy line. <laughs> I know goofy, but first of all, you'll have a hard time forgetting it. <laughs> and second of all, what other word grabs all these positive emotions so perfectly? Once you have energy, connection, becomes available. So does curiosity, generosity, creativity, confidence, joy, trust, love. Yummy. 
As I finished drawing my version of Maslow's hierarchy, my friend in the front row raised their hand and asked, okay, great, so I need to restore my energy. How do you suggest I do that in all my free time? I said, the simple answer is, you need to replenish some of the energy you spend. The not so simple answer is that when you're already in deficit, exhausted or burned out, me telling you to meditate or do yoga or go for a walk in the woods feels insulting. Maybe even like more work to do. So I went back up to the whiteboard and I said, this sine wave, this is how good energy flows. You wanna know how to resolve those needs? We need to create this wave. Spend, restore, stress, recover, survival, yummy. Here's where you start. Confront those thousand emails. Then drag your body outside for a walk and some fresh air. Meet with the principal. Then listen to your favorite song and sing it out loud on the way home. Study for that exam. Then tell jokes with your friends. Let your to-do list drag you all over town. And then sit down for a yummy cup of coffee or tea. Get a flat tire. But instead of getting upset and spending more energy, restore some, replenish some, and listen to a podcast. It's not complicated, but it's just not how we do things. Spend, restore. Stress, recover. Survival, yummy. Staying in yummy is the goal, obviously, but it's also the challenge. It took me a long time to figure this out because the physical part is easier to understand. I could train hard, and then let my body recover. But what I didn't know <laughs> was that while I was resting my body, my mind was busy still hijacking my energy. I couldn't figure out how I could be so fit and get up to race and be so exhausted. It didn't make any sense. But once I began to realize that all of those thoughts were costing me energy, then I could begin to think about how to recover that. Spend, restore, stress, recover, survival, yummy. For a long time, I thought it was just me that believed that extraordinary was something other people were born with. <coughs> Maybe that resonates for you too. But I'll tell you, in 30 years, and working with all kinds of high-performing people, that form of self-doubt, it's the rule, not the exception. <laughs> I had exhausted myself into ordinary and then believed I belonged there. Once I began to discover that it was already in me, that I didn't have to pretend to be so resilient, that I didn't have to wish I felt better. All that struggle, all that work, because I was so resilient, it felt normal, but it never felt awesome. I just wanted to feel awesome, you know, yummy. <laughs> it takes guts to go after what you want. The big wants, they take that depth of the soul kind of guts. And that, that drives up fear. Get you in the throat kind of fear. Survival, survival emboldens that fear. But it is energy. Energy that gives you power. Energy gives you the power to perform. So now you know. Yummy yourselves up. Replenish yourself into yummy over and over and over. And go get your extraordinary. Thank you. <laughs>